Now, Seamus O'Grady. No. I believe this is the smallest factory in Westport. It's this been is described. the smallest factory in Westport. And where I'm sitting, I can leave my hand on Anton. <laughs> and I'm not getting any younger. So if something falls to the ground, for instance, I'm using that scissors and it falls to the ground, I'm getting on in age, so I yep. have to learn how to pick it up. So I do this. Oh, man. That's... Uh... There you go, right? Innovative. Have you haven't painted, patented that idea by any chance, have you? There you go, and, I, and it sits in that. Yeah. So you're a tailor? I'm a tailor by trade. How long are you a, tra a tailor for? I'm a tailor 60 years. 60 years. And what age are you now? I'm, I'm a tailor. I'm, I'm 68 years of age. And I'm at the, I, from once I was eight, 8 years old, I was in, and I was in with my father's shop, sitting up on the bench, learning to sew. And uh, how long was your father at it before you? My father was. He 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 oh, he 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 be. Fifty, he be well, fifty eight years at it. Did he ever tell you when he started the year he started up? He start he started he, he when he when he started first, he started down in Quarry Lane, in the small workshop out the back, and that time at the key there was Dockers. And the darkers were the only crowd that had money. They had money for drink, but they had money also for to get clothes made. And and they were one of his chief customers. Right? And we we started like that and then he he he, he, he moved in, into town and the he bought a the bought a place in town and he started off and he worked worked six Six days a week, six days a week, from Monday morning, half eight had to be on the bench. The workshop had to be swept and dead all on the floor. And what was your father's first name? Well, pa Patrick. And that's the pa picture of the shop up there? Patrick O'Grady. That's, that's, that's the name. Patrick pa pa O'Grady. On the Key Hill? On the Key Hill. Where Michael Ring is now? Is Where Michael Ring is now. Yeah, okay. Right. So you... Um, and I... I left school. I didn't. I never liked school, so I wanted to be a tailor. I always wanted to be a tailor. My father made clothes. He was a ladies and gents. He done. He done. He done as much ladies as he did gents. Ladies at time got costumes made, and to be always. And the funny thing about it was, he he do the measuring, and I'd be writing the measures on the book. But when did it come to the, the measuring the weight of the lace line, mm -hmm. waist line, he'd take the pin out of my hand and he'd write it down rather than call it out. <laughs> <laughs> and when he measured them, he would? When he measured them, he wouldn't want to call out her waist. Okay, he was, he'd take the pencil out of my hand and he'd write it down himself. He was very discreet. Discreet. Mm -hmm. And were they... But he, he reared a family of 12. Seven boys and five girls. The seven boys have trades, and the, the five women all had shortened and typing. He sold a garden. He often said, "Only for the garden, he might never have reared us." But he worked hard. He wasn't a, a drinking man at all. He was a very, he was a. No, I put it this way to you: he was a noble man. And you lived over the shop. We lived out of the quay at the time, with the house of the quay. In Quarry Lane? No, no, no. Up, up further again. But my grandmother lived down in Quarry Lane. Okay. And then we, 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 we bought the place in town, and we rented the top half of it, as a little flat at the time, you weren't, you weren't getting them all for it. And, but, we'd always, oh, we, we had, we, we, we had, from every house, from here to Taliban, I knew every house, because every house, they all came into us from that side. The right customers. And a decent crowd, they always got paid. Always, they got paid. But the hardest crowd of all, as was some of the farmers. <laughs> they always wanted to bargain. It didn't matter what it was, once they bargained. 
And if you only gave him something off, that was it. And but, uh, but every suit that was ever made in our workshop was drafted out on cloth. No patterns, no patterns at all. And it was drafted from the measurements. This drafted from the measurements. It and down, we, we had what they call a long trouser shape. You drew, drew a line down. As you can see now, this is this my, my, my workshop now. It's a miniature workshop now. Mm. By nature, by nature, by nature of the trade and the ready-made clothes that's in today, people have no respect for suits now. Mm. They go now and they buy a suit, 100 euro, and they don't mind if they lay the jacket behind them and go home without it. <laughs> right? And nice Whereas in our day, you minded your suit, you came home, you hung it up on a hanger, and you didn't need to press it before you go to the dance for the next night. Oh. The sad thing about it is, is that it's a giant trade. No, it is. It is. But I wouldn't swap my trade now. I do. I go back and I do it all again. Stitch for stitch. My father was a hard master. No room for error. No room for error at all. And what, what, did you, what gave you the satisfaction of it? What did you like about it? I loved the finished garment on the man. And he'd put it on him. And he'd look. And he'd say, I had one particular customer. He'd say, you're the only man that can put a collar on a coat the way I like it. Because he'd have a half inch of the white shirt right around the collar. He said, that's what I like. 